me being here. And uh, I feel like uh, I'm coming home, or one coin is coming home, because you all know I studied in Oxford, I lived in London, and I simply needed to be here when I heard about this event. But then what happened is I had to have a minor surgery last week, and they told me, you cannot fly. I said, I said very bad words that I don't want to repeat on the stage, of course. And I said, what do we do? So what we actually did, I traveled yesterday eight hours by train from Frankfurt to come here and to see you all, because I'm really, really excited about. <laughs> and I hope that you'll give me very, very soon a good excuse to open a one coin office in London, because I really would love to do this. Thank you very much for the warm welcome. Thank you very much to the other speakers, Kari, and the organization of the event is simply amazing. What I want to speak to you about a bit is actually why we're all here. And I know you, most of you are amazing networker and you have been in many other companies, okay, but I just want to tell you actually what cryptocurrency is about. Not only see the video, not only see, oh my God, it's exciting, but why actually, what is the reason? Why is cryptocurrency going to change the world? Now, um, who of you has a Facebook account? <laughs> we all, almost all of us have a Facebook account. The interesting about this company that changed the world called Facebook is that this company is actually less than 10 years old. So something happened 10 years ago that changed all our lives somehow. And I believe that the same is actually going to happen with cryptocurrency. When I was working for McKinsey, which is a very big consultancy firm, I was doing a lot of finance and banking insurance and very, very much interested in money. How does money work, the banking system and so on. In 2010, I came across a concept called Bitcoin. And I made the mistake that I did not invest in it. I did not put money on it. And um, yes, it is what it is. I thought first that it will not work, and then it got more and more successful, and I watched more closely. To be very honest with you, I think the most things already have been invented. The internet, Google, Facebook, Apple, a lot of innovations already happened, and people just copy them. But cryptocurrency, in my opinion, is one of the last niches, one of the last places where we have a big chance to be one of the first ones. Now, but you might tell me, yes, but Bitcoin already did it. They are so big. I believe that Bitcoin and OneCoin are very different from each other and that OneCoin can make it much bigger than Bitcoin. Why? Everybody can say this, but what are the facts? Why? Bitcoin is a very, very interesting concept, but has three problems. Point one is, it is not for people who are not very knowledgeable and very good IT specialists. It's not a coin for everyone. I cannot just go and just mine Bitcoins easily. Complicated mining pools, difficult. I can lose my coins like this if I'm not careful. I was a year ago on a Bitcoin convention and the speaker asked us, how many of you have Bitcoins? Well, obviously all of us, otherwise we would not waste our time on a Bitcoin convention. And then he asked us, how many of you have lost Bitcoins? Again, all of us. Why? Because it's very difficult and technologically complicated to hold the coins, to mine them and to keep them. So this is why I believe that Bitcoin can never make it as a mass market currency. And mass market is what Facebook is. Everybody can join now and it's easy. Easy, simple, and not risky. So this is why I believe that OneCoin with a simple concept, with the mining pools, the centralization where we do backups for your accounts is much simpler and easier. You cannot lose OneCoins unless you lose your computer, your passwords and everything, and even then we can help you. The second thing why I believe that OneCoin has a huge advantage we are not an anonymous currency like Bitcoin. Now we all know that the world is getting more difficult to live in. Bitcoin was created before the 11th of September, before the terrorism attacks. 
and the world currently gets smaller and smaller and controls get bigger and bigger. So a currency can never make it really big and be accepted by governments, regulators, if you are anonymous and if you give individuals the opportunity for money laundering and for bad things. And if you all follow the press, you know that Bitcoin always is abused for things like this. Anonymous transactions, people buying drugs, buying weapons, buying things that they should not. This is something that we do not want to do with OneCoin. We don't want people who need this anonymity, they can go somewhere else, but not with us. And this is also why we are very, very strict on procedures. Whoever joins OneCoin does a KYC procedure where you upload your ID card and we do everything that the regulator even does not want us to do, but we do this to show that we are legitimate business to stay. We cannot grow this company really big and be a global player if we don't play by the rules. And this is very important for us. And the third thing, and this is my favorite topic, <laughs> thank you. And the third thing why I think that OneCoin has a really great advantage over Bitcoin is how we use the coin. Now if somebody asks me, and people ask me all the time, oh, cryptocurrency sounds interesting, but how is cryptocurrency backed up? What is the value of cryptocurrency? And to be very frank and honest with all of you, the answer is simple and not very pleasant. Cryptocurrency alone has no value at all. Nothing. It is not backed up by gold, it is not backed up by a government, nothing. So why has Bitcoin a price? Why has one coin a price? Now everybody can go and create a cryptocurrency. Kali, for example, who currently does not pay attention to what I say, is um, he can create Kari coin, and now he's, uh, he missed it. And his coin has no value, nothing. I'm sorry, Kari, it's what it is. However, cryptocurrency can create value with two things. One is the brand. You all know that you will go and you will pay a higher price for a well-known brand than for somebody who is like not well-known. Now, Bitcoin, everybody knows Bitcoin, so they have a very strong brand. One coin, when one coin started with 100 members, 1,000 members, it was a very weak brand. Now we are over 1.4 million people. The brand gets more and more global, more and more well known, so this again drives the value. We have 1.4 million people. Now think again about the Facebook example. If I launch today Ruja book, will you come and join my Ruja book? No, you will not. All your friends are somewhere else, yeah? So you have to get them all here. You invested time in like creating friendships. You have your fan page. You'll just say, fuck off, don't bother. Yeah? Like, let me join. <laughs> I'm not joining anything else. I stay where I am. This is why people cannot copy us. I can give you today the source code of my coin, but you cannot build up like this 1.3 million people who invested time in this concept to understand what it is, who invested money in it, who want to develop it. All these people need to move to two coin to make two coin as valuable as one coin is today. <coughs> and this, in my opinion, will never happen. And I'll tell you also why, why not. The second thing about cryptocurrency and everything that is out there, nobody will go and pay money for something that has no way to use it. Now, we have these beautiful gold coins. I don't know if you know them. For the ruby rank, you can get a gold coin. It's very nice. It's about valuable, about 700, 750 euros. It's fine. So, and I make the example, which is the following. If me and Kari end up on a lonely island, and Kari has a stupid gold coin, and I have a knife, you bet I will win, yeah? And I'll survive much longer than he will. <laughs> and the same actually is valid for cryptocurrency. If we just tell ourselves, oh, it's valuable, it's valuable, the price will grow, and where do we end? I think you all know what happened to the real estate, to the mortgage crisis. It's a bubble, it bursts. If no real value is created, then also the cryptocurrency bubble will burst. So for our coin to make it valuable, to make it stable, and for all of you to be millionaires, to be happy, to be, you know, to have a real value, this coin needs to be used. And this is what we as a company do actually. I don't do networking. I have not been in any other networking company before, and thank God I'll never go to a second one. It's very challenging sometimes to work with networkers. But 
my main job or what we do in our office is we want to create value for the coin and we want to make it usable. Now, as the guy said, we mined only 20% of the coins yet, so we are at the beginning of a very, very exciting journey. So all these new functionalities and the usability of the coin needs to be built up in the next one, two, three years. And then, I know you say this year will be amazing, but believe me, in two or three years, this will really boom. You have the example of the guy who bought 27 dollars or 27 euro of Bitcoin. Five, six years later, this guy sold these Bitcoins for 800,000 euro. This is what happened to Bitcoin too. So how will we create the real value and the usability? And this is what I want to talk about and tell you how it works. Now, everybody knows PayPal, I guess, right? Cryptocurrency is nothing different than PayPal. It sounds super complicated, but it's actually a method or a system how you can make payments. So if I want to make a payment from Germany to the UK, I can send PayPal, I can send a wire transfer, but I also could send cryptocurrency. Now Germany and Europe is very, very easy. I can send a wire transfer like this. But I see many here of you who probably have family abroad. How do I send money if I live in Dubai and my family lives in India? How do I do this? Most probably, I'm not sending a huge amount of money, so I'll go to Western Union. And we all know what fees Western Union charges. We all know what limits Western Union has. And we know how difficult it is for the people on the other side to go and get the money out, and it takes time. Now, what if I use one coin? We all saw the beautiful one court, which gives you access to the coins. So I can, within 10 minutes, send coins without a limit on the amount and people can make payments cross-border. And this is what cryptocurrency is about. The future of money, a payment system. And we are not competing with the banks. This is very important for me. We are competing with people who currently do a lot of payments, like Western Union. We are competing for the mass market, for everyday people. People who even might not have access to banking. Who will use the coin? Probably it will not be us in Europe because we are so spoiled with the banking system. Everybody can have a bank account, everybody can go out there. But out there, there are two billion people who have no bank accounts, no access to banking, or banks just say, we don't make enough money on them, we don't want them. This can be people in Africa who even don't use smartphones, who have these old Nokia phones, one in a village. These people, actually could get access to money and can be banked. OneCoin can provide banking for everyone, and this is my vision. <laughs> it's a very technological way of making payments quick, easy, and fast. Why cannot Bitcoin do this? Because it's more complicated, and the second thing is that very few people know Bitcoin were the first one. So they did the blockchain, they did all of this. But unfortunately, or fortunately for us, our technology is better and we can do more transactions with our blockchain than Bitcoin can. Bitcoin can do with their blockchain as many transactions per year as MasterCard does per day. It's a technical limit, they just cannot grow more. Well, we, we started years after them, thank God, and we have a more advanced technology. We can take much more transactions they can, than they can. So again, we can serve a much broader market. Very, very interesting. So what we plan is to bring the cryptocurrency to the emerging markets and to get the users of the coin there. We started already very successfully in Asia, Philippines, Thailand, all these countries. China is one of the biggest users actually currently of the coin. We start off now in Latin America. We have planned strategically second half of the year to go to India because this is one of the most cryptocurrency friendly countries. Very, very interesting. And end of year we want to go more focused into Africa. Now everybody can build these markets already now of course, but what I'm saying is that we as a company focus locally on banking solutions, legal entities, and we just help the entrants in this schedule. I think that the emerging markets are the ones who will benefit most from cryptocurrency. A lot of you come and say, oh my God, I make so much money, one coin changed my life. 
yeah, fine, whatever, 300 people, 300 millionaires, it's okay. But just imagine that we can make money and change the life of so many other people. <laughs> the second thing, how we will add value, and this is again something exciting for the network, I know. We will launch in the second half of the year a merchant program. What is a merchant program? Everybody has heard of eBay or of Alibaba, of course we have, right? So what this means is that merchants can accept one coins as a payment solution. So if you accept PayPal, you can accept one coins, for example. And what we currently are working on is a bonus system for the network. So if you know a merchant, let's say with 10 shops or an online store, and you bring this merchant to the network, of course, you should make bonus on whatever one coins are going for this merchant. Why? Because you increase the value of the coin. So of course, we want you to profit from this. And then once again, I tell you, how can two coin copy us if we have a strong network of users and a strong network of merchants? It is impossible. We have such, how to say, we have so much now done Somebody to catch us needs two years or three years, probably. <laughs> and this is how we think that we will create value for this coin. Make it usable for the people, use it as a payment system, as bank transactions. Link the coin to the one card one day that you all saw. Now this card, it took us quite long to get this card done. It's approved by MasterCard and uh, in two, three weeks, also the union pay card comes, which is very important for the Asian countries. It is branded, it is our logo. Currently you can withdraw commission with it and a lot of you use it, fine. But the idea behind this card actually, and the vision is that one day you can load your coins to this card and just go in every store and pay for whatever you want to buy with one coin. Now virtual currency is currently very virtual. I go into my back office, I see a million coins and I'm happy and I say, okay, I have like, this is the value. But in the end of the day, we need to make virtual currency real. It has to go to the stores. I have to be able to buy flowers for my mother, buy shoes, I love shoes. I have to be able to go and pay for my shoes with one coin. And this is how this can work. Link the card to the coin Bitcoin, currently nobody knows how many merchants accept Bitcoin, but they think about 50,000, 60,000, 80,000. And there are millions of MasterCard merchants. So wherever the MasterCard logo is, or the Union Pay logo, you can go and pay with one coin. And this is how cryptocurrency becomes real currency. And this is an extremely powerful concept. So in the end of the day, I'm probably happy that I did not invest in Bitcoin because <laughs> otherwise one coin probably would not have been created. But um, you probably see it, the concept excites me very much. We work very, very hard on uh, making this coin popular, making it usable and uh, support the network wherever we can. We'll have a global event end of April somewhere in Asia. We're still checking out where and I hope to see many of you there. What I as um, a company or as space or whatever owner, founder of OneCoin want to do this year is to do a bit less events like this one, but I'm going more to the professional boring cryptocurrency event because people start talking about us there too. And this is the next step. We have to bring OneCoin out to the public. They need to understand what we are doing. So this is my mission for this year. One coin needs to become visible in the financial world, and this is why a London office would be actually quite cool. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> With this, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, you will hear many of the amazing leaders that we have, and I'm sure they will tell you how they make money and what they do. But for me, it is very, very important when you go out there, speak about the cryptocurrency and the key message. I know many of you have been in several companies, done a lot of products, but it is very, very important for me that you just somehow get the excitement, the vision, what cryptocurrency can do for the world. Thank you very much.